Welcome to this edition of Titan Television. Today we will see how your life can change when there's a new addition to the family. We'll look into a new trend with dangerous side effects. And we'll have some information for senior boys heading off to college. Stay tuned for more on this edition of Titan TV. Good afternoon, Titans. And welcome to this edition of Titan Television. Good afternoon, Titans. I'm Ashton Dobson. And I'm Mackenzie Elliott. As we prepare for next year, make sure you've scheduled your enrollment conferences with your advisor. These conferences will be held on March 3rd and 5th, and you can schedule your appointment through the school website. Just go to lswhs.lsr7.org and click on the Course Selection Conferences on the home page. Because of these conferences, there will be no school on Friday, March 6th. Signing up for classes may bring stress to the future. Kayla Ohl tells us more about what really is making teens stressed. Last year, the American Psychological Association surveyed the stress of Americans. They concluded that people ages 18 to 33 were the country's most stressed generation. However, today, this title belongs to an even younger generation, American teenagers. As during the school year, um, students are expected five days out of the week to be on, and you have a schedule, you have a structure, you have all these expectations. Stress can be caused by a number of things, including worrying about the future, relationships, work, and academics. But the level of stress, I think, really depends upon the student and what they're trying to accomplish or achieve. And while teens might be more stressed than ever before, they are still teens, and procrastination is inherent in all of us. A lot of times for me, it'll just be like scrambling the morning of to read through something that I missed, and sometimes that works out, and sometimes it doesn't. Counselor Carrie Ewell talks about why students tend to procrastinate. It's human nature to want to do the things that we enjoy and do the things that are pleasurable. With more distractions from social media and new technology, it can be harder for students to focus on their studies. I try not to procrastinate, except on weekends it's kind of inevitable. It's like, it's like, should I do this now or can I sit down and watch Netflix? I procrastinate like I, most of the time I take a nap because I'm tired and then we get a little snack, watch a movie or something and then then I do my homework. About 90% of students associate their problems with procrastination, and 42% of teens say that they are not doing enough to manage their stress. To ensure that you are not a part of this statistic, here are a few things that you can do. First of all, you just have to name it. Like, I'm stressed out, I should probably do something about that. Um, and then definitely, like, either being able to talk to somebody about it or figuring out, like, ways to reduce your stress, coming up with some good coping skills to just calm yourself down or prioritizing the activities that you are involved in. Talk to your teachers if you feel behind in your classes and prioritize your homework assignments by most important to least important. Learn how to say no to things that would add unnecessary stress to your life. Always keep a positive, realistic attitude and accept that you can't control certain things. I think you just have to recognize your strengths and weaknesses and try to push yourself with your own personal goals as opposed to comparing yourself to others because even if you are the best in something, there are thousands of people around the world who are significantly better than you. So you're never going to be the best. I don't think that's what you should strive for. I think you should strive for personal happiness out of what you're doing. Reporting for Titan Television, this is Kayla Ewell. For seniors looking forward to graduation, college can come with many opportunities and lifestyles. Justin Fowler shows his fellow senior boys one type of lifestyle available in college. This may appear to be an average house, and inside there is a close-knit family. However, there is no mom or dad, just brothers. I think fraternities were created to be something more than just an organization. I mean, instead of just having members, you have brothers. And there are over 9 million brothers involved in fraternities nationwide. It is because of this sense of brotherhood that 71% of Greeks graduate next to only 50% of non-Greek students. UMKC students Ramsey Fowler and Colby Carpenter know firsthand what it is like to be in this brotherhood. 
I mean, it, it's no joke. The Brotherhood is completely true, that you have someone's back, that you would do anything for these guys. And this family understands the stereotypes that they face. Everybody thinks of a frat boy as the guys that wear the Sperrys, the chubby shorts, and the collar shirts. It's true. But I think, to, I think what it means to be a frat boy is um, holding yourself more accountable than others on campus. And you're not just necessarily representing yourself by the actions you do, you're representing a whole organization. Eternity alumni David Lee understands the common misconceptions as well. Greek life gets a reputation that you have to look a certain part, you have to be a certain person, um, you have to dress a certain way, you have to come from a certain family. Um, I just don't believe that. If you are interested in giving Greek life a chance, Kathleen Drake, the head of Fraternity and Sorority Affairs at UMKC, explains the process you must follow to get involved. They'll have formal recruitment within that first week of school. Um, and so sometimes you'll have uh, dinner with them. Um, sometimes they'll have you over and you're watching TV. Um, and so that lasts for about a week until they hand out bids, which is kind of their invitation of saying, hey, we're interested in you. Are you interested in us? After you receive your bids, it becomes your decision to what fraternity you want to join. 99% of the time, when people rush and after they decide which one to which one to pledge, they say it just felt right. Whatever it may be, it just felt right, and this is the right choice. Although fraternities are a lot of fun and you make many new friends, do they take away from your college education? I'd say being a fraternity has helped my GPA tremendously. Um, a lot of fraternities have study sessions that you have to attend. And people can choose not to go to mixers and date parties, you know, if they have tests coming up. I mean, it's, about, it's all about how well you want to do in school. These organizations do come with a cost. The additional fees that come along with belonging to a fraternity are often one of the reasons students choose not to be a part of Greek life. Many think this is a small price to pay for experiences that lead to making lifelong friends. One of our fraternity brothers is going through cancer right now. We just found out two weeks ago. And so we're all rallying around him and... and uh, He's one of my dearest friends, and it's tragic and it's horrible, but we're going to fight it together and kill it together. So it's a lifetime of experiences. It's not just four years joining a Greek organization. It's for life. With photographer Mason Jones, this is Justin Fowler reporting for Titan Television. Thanks, Justin. Now we will take a look into Team Titanium's upcoming season. Here's Danielle Gorman with a story. Over the last two months, Team Titanium has been hard at work planning, strategizing, and building their newest robot. With their first competition coming up in just a few weeks, Team Titanium wants all the practice they can get. So on Saturday, the team met with 24 other robotics teams in the area for a scrimmage to prepare them for their regional competitions coming up. They all like work together to like build this robot, and it's like a really big accomplishment, and um, just competing with everyone's really fun. While building a robot is fun, the team does face some challenges along the way. And with the clock ticking, the team is starting to feel the time crunch. We only have six weeks to build a robot, uh, and we build two. We build a practice robot and a competition robot. And so the challenge is uh, getting both of those put together and running in those six weeks. However, it all pays off when they compete at their regional competition. Competitions are a lot of fun for robotics because I mean, just like the environment that you're in, it's just like a ton of people who have the same interests as you, and it's like, everyone's just so happy. Although the scrimmage was just all in good fun, Team Titanium was happy to get a feel for the game before the actual competition start. Team Titanium is competing on March 6th and 7th in Arkansas, and March 20th and 21st in St. Louis, and finally on April 3rd and 4th in Queen City. If you are thinking about joining next year or would like more information on our school's robotics team, go to www.teamtitanium.org. Reporting for Titan Television, this is Danielle Gorman. Now we turn our attention to a substance that has gained popularity among teens. Danielle Gorman and I got the chance to go deeper into this new trend that can have dangerous consequences. Synthetic drugs are new, inviting, and common among teenagers. In fact, one in nine 12th graders have tried or regularly used synthetic marijuana. Synthetic drugs, or designer drugs as they are often called, are man-made drugs similar to popular, more natural ones in our environment. Examples of these are synthetic cannabinoids, bath salts, and LSD. See, most of these are highly illegal, but drug makers are trying to bypass the legal restraints. 
Dr. Stephen Thornton explains exactly how this is done. What these drug makers have done is basically they add a, a fluorine or they take away a carbon or they add another group to it and now in the eyes of the law it's a completely different substance mm -hmm. even though everybody knows that it's so closely related that it's going to have similar effects and so what happens then is the government figures out that they're using this substance they ban it well guess what happens they just change it a little more and now there are probably 60 70 80 different synthetic cannabinoids out there some of them we don't even know if people are using them or where they're using them because they're so new and with so many new drug compounds available the effects they have on those taking them are unclear you know we don't know exactly you know how they're going to affect everybody individually every time somebody takes them they are kind of they're their own test subject they become the guinea pig and mm -hmm. and then we kind of learn about bad things after it's happened to people but they do know that these drugs can be very dangerous for instance with the 2C drugs that end bomb a lot of seizures we see kids end up on ventilators and some just die um, with the synthetic cannabinoids the spice or the K2 drugs we see a lot of seizures as well we also see psychosis sadly last mother's day one Indiana family found this out the hard way three boys took the same thing and uh, they went to bed and uh, the next morning Sam did not wake up Sam Matze was only a sophomore in high school when he lost his life because of synthetic drugs. He was an honor roll student, an athlete, and a first chair tenor sax in band. So he had plans, he had goals, he knew where he was going. How he died does not at all reflect how he lived his life. Sam and his two friends took NBOM, or synthetic LSD. NBOM is in a higher class of synthetic drug than K2 or Spice. They've been manipulated in such a way that they cause a lot of hallucinations. So they're kind of like, one way to think of it is they're kind of like LSD crossed with methamphetamines. We have found with these substances that they're very, very, very potent. There's enough on little blotter papers to, to mm -hmm. kill people. So the question is, why take a drug if it can kill you? One main reason many teenagers use synthetic drugs is because they have a reputation of moving through your body quickly and not showing up on a drug test well, we can get around this drug test and I can still get high by, because they're not going to find this substance in my system there. They're looking for these, the, you know, these seven things and not that thing. However, this is becoming less true. Your own drug genes are changing in, in many ways to respond to that problem and, and, and now there are drug genes that can pick up on those things and, they, and we can actually test for a lot of these substances now. Sam thought that this drug would be okay because failing a drug test would ruin his life and he didn't want to ruin his life and it ended up that that's what took his life. And Sam's mom is trying to teach and inform teenagers about the common misconceptions relating to this drug. So what we want to do is get information out to young people that's accurate and that shatters these myths that they may be hearing. She has started an organization called Sam's Watch to achieve this. Through the website, you can find Sam's story and learn more about synthetic drugs. Just to try and get that information out about what exactly this was. And for us as a family, that has been our focus to help save others at this point based upon our experience. We really don't have any long-term goals because a year ago I would have never imagined being where I am right now. Teaching and preventing the use of synthetic drugs has become a goal in our community. If, if it's not and I don't know what it's going to do to me, then, you know, how is it safe for me to use it? That's an awfully big risk to take when you're 16, 17, 18 years old, you know. With photographer Danielle Gorman, this is Mackenzie Elliott reporting for Titan Television. Because there is so much to learn about synthetic drugs, we have a more in-depth version on LS West Online. You can find it under the Student Life page. Now we'll send it to Dylan Johnson with the Titan Sports Update. Good afternoon, Titans. Welcome to this edition of the Titan Sports Update. Over the weekend, Titans from wrestling and girls swim competed for state. 
wrestling was represented by seven titans with five moving on to the finals. Tyler Nelson placed fifth. DJ Brassfield Thogerson placed fourth. Lawyer Morgan Beckham placed third. Ethan Nielsen placed second. Austin Eveler also placed second. The boys and girls basketball team will face Lee Summit this Friday. The girls play at 5.30, followed by the boys at 7 o'clock. Visit lswestonline.com or follow us at LSW Sports Update for the results. We will wrap up the basketball season on the next Titan TV airing on March 11th. The convergence topic for this month is health issues. Visit LS West Online under the in-depth tab for a story about iron deficiency in runners here at West and the CrossFit craze. That's all we have for this edition of the Titan Sports Update. I'm Dylan Johnson. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Dylan. I got the chance to talk to several Titans about their experience with something many face. Here's what they had to say. The typical nerd or the typical person who's just book smart. Ultra flamboyant and over the top about everything and melodramatic. Arrogant. Opinionated. People don't really think that cheer is a sport. People have called me like a Jesus freak before. In high school, being stereotyped or stereotyping others is nothing new. It makes me sad that they don't know me well enough to see that I have different sides to me. I do study and I do read books a lot, but I think it's important to see that everyone has different dimensions to them. Sometimes it gets on my nerves that people have wrong ideas about me, but in the end, like it's not gonna, I'm not going to be able to change that. People can say what they want to about me, but it doesn't really matter. Like I'm just living by the Bible and I'm living for the audience of one. So why does a person feel the need to make judgments about someone they don't know? It's uncomfortable walking up to people, introducing yourself, getting to know people. That takes time, it takes energy, and sometimes the easy thing to do is just to make general beliefs and, and think that that's true, but typically it's not. Could these general beliefs be something we are taught? Research shows that children in the U.S. can have embedded ideas about race, gender, and social groups as early as three. It's what we call socialization. They learned it from their parents. They learned it from, you know, their primary groups, who they're, you know, who they spend the most time with. In a study done by Princeton University, it was found that when stereotyping, students tend to be more prejudiced. When you stereotype on them, when you put a narrow label on them and treat them as other, you're setting yourself up for a mentality, for a worldview that is not going to work in the 21st century, uh, that is not going to work in getting along well with other people. Perhaps the best way to eliminate these assumptions would be to get to know others. Behind the scenes, if you were to get to know us, you would see how much we've accomplished and how much work goes into being a cheerleader. It's not all pom-poms and <laughs> little cheer uniforms were more than that. Judge people on how they treat other people versus what they look like, versus whether they're male or female, versus, you know, all of the other labels we put on people. You need to get to know someone before you can really put a stereotype on them because there's a lot more than just what you can see. It's kind of the only you don't book, judge a book by the cover. I mean, who, who we are is not what, the, what that front cover is. The only way that we can truly prove there's more than what meets the eye is to step out of our comfort zones and show people that we are more than our stereotypes. With photographers Maggie Otis and Anthony Helverson, this is Ashton Dobson reporting for Titan Television. Thank you to those who spoke out and allowed us to create that story. Now it's time for this week's Question of the Week. Welcome to this edition of Question of the Week. This week, we took the segment to your teachers to see if they could understand some of the new slang we've been using around West. I asked them to define a word and use it in a sentence. Let's see what they said. So can I have you define squad and use it in a sentence? Uh, squad is a group of people that have a common uh, direction, a common goal. Squad is a group of people um, attacking the enemy, like a platoon. Squad to me is a group of people or family. Can you use on fleek in a sentence? On fleek is like perfect, like uh, her hair is on fleek. On fleek means you cutting up, you looking good, you doing it, coming in looking right and tight. Like Mrs. Dablos is on fleek. What about salty? People call me salty a lot. 
So I think it's just being in a crusty bad mood. You got an attitude about everything. Everything is rubbing you wrong, okay? So you, every, you just throwing off salt, just shaking it, hating, okay? Just like a shaker. What about fam? Fam. Yeah, that's my, that's my, like, that's my group that I hang with. That's my fam. I'm tight with all of them, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. My social studies department's my fam. Fam? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, fam is right up there with the squad. Like, fam is your people. Could you define I can't even? Yes, that's what students say when I ask them a question in class. I can't even, and then it just goes from there. I can't even. Oh, that just means when you just can't even. <laughs> you can't. Like, define it. Uh, I just, I, I'm not, I, I can't, I know, I can't even. Okay. Well, there you have it. Some of your teachers' answers were really on point. We'll see you soon for the next edition of Question of the Week. If you have any suggestions for the next Question of the Week, tweet us at Ellis West Online. Up next, we'll look deeper into the life of a teen parent. Here's Stacia Anderson with the story. Each year, nearly 750,000 teenagers in the United States become pregnant. I really didn't tell a lot of people until like I was five months along and I posted a picture on Instagram and that's how like a lot of people found out. They were very upset, they were mad, and now they're very supportive. Caitlin is due next month and has had to make different plans for her future. After I have her, his mom's gonna be watching her during the day while I go to school. Despite the fact only 40% of teen mothers finish high school and fewer than 2% finish college by the age of 30, Caitlin still plans on finishing high school and continuing her education. I want to be a labor and delivery nurse. <laughs> Graduate Madison Piercy became pregnant her senior year at Lisa Met West. Piercy never had the chance to tell her parents herself. My parents kind of found out on their own. They looked through my phone and then we just kind of had to talk about it. But soon after the news sunk in, they became very excited to help raise their first grandbaby. Madison has such a huge support of her own family, like beyond I feel like a normal family, so she has so much love and attention. Madison is pursuing her passion in nannying after she settles in with baby Lucy. Jody Raymer Hetty knows firsthand what these girls will experience. Raymer was a teen mother at the age of 19. I mean, I don't regret having um, Danielle at a young age um, because she helped me grow. One of these challenges was not being able to finish her education. I couldn't manage school and a job and caring for um, a child, you know, on just my income. So it was, it was very tough. Without an education these days, I can't stress enough on how important it is to have a college degree to be able to get a decent job. Both girls sacrifice things that are important in their lives for their daughters. I thought um, I would be able to like, you know, get a new car by the end of the year, like, go on a senior trip and everything, but all my money basically goes mm -hmm. to the baby. Madison is working herself, so she pays for everything for Lucy. I guess you just really don't have as much free time, and you really have to think about your life for her instead of yourself. If teens do find themselves in this situation, there is some crucial advice that should be considered. They absolutely need to start prenatal vitamins. If they get pregnant, um, start on prenatal vitamins. That's the first thing to do. Try to communicate with your support group to make sure everything you're, you're supposed to do is being followed. Talk to your parents about contraceptions. Don't be afraid to ask about it. Mm -hmm. It seems very scary at first, but after you see your child, it's really worth all the tough parts. With photographer Jacqueline Raymer, this is Stacia Anderson reporting for Titan Television. Thanks, Stacia. Well, that's all we have for this edition of Titan Television. I'm Ashton Dobson. And I'm Mackenzie Elliott. We'll see you on March 11th for the next edition of Titan TV.